Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, Living with Authority, Pastor Moses from Kenya teaches how to take authority over the challenges we face in life. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. Those of you watching online, we are glad to have you. And uh, let's grab our Bibles. We'll go straight to the Word of God. Um, my name is Moses from Deliverance Church, Umoja in Nairobi, as it has been said. Thank you so much, Pastor, together with your lovely wife. And of course, Pastor Wanene and Marcy, appreciate you, together with Ma. Uh, in the book of Luke, chapter number 10, Walking and Living in Authority, um, there's a story there that's very interesting about the 70 who returned with joy, uh, having gone out there and dealt with demons, and they brought a testimony to Jesus, uh, telling Jesus, um, verse 17, chapter 10, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Verse 18 says, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. But then, verse 19 is my area of concentration. Behold, I give you authority to trample over the snakes, the serpents, the scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by no means hurt you. I repeat that line again, nothing shall by no means hurt hurt you. Isn't it interesting that many people are so much power hungry, they look for power in whatever way they could find. They want the purchasing power, they want the power to read, that is knowledge being power, they want all that. But then there is one who holds the authority. <laughs> After you read, someone will say, we now give you the power. That the one who is giving you is the one with authority. Haven't you wondered sometimes uh, or had this question, who authorized this? Not who gave the power to. Who authorized this? The one who authorizes is the one with the authority and you can confer the same to someone. So what is power? There is a difference critically between power and authority. Power is a term that is given that means personal capacity or an individual to influence others. That is power. You can influence others. But then authority is a legal and formal right to a person who can take decisions. The one can influence, but there is another one who can take decisions. There are people who have got the power to do so much. In an employment settings, they can do something. That is power. They have the power over the administration, power over this and that. But the owner of the company has the authority. You get the difference? Uh, there are key differences between power and authority, which I'll run through, and then I will tell us how you can get that authority. As we have read that scripture that I give you the authority. It's, I like what you've been learning about the sayings of Jesus. One of the sayings of Jesus is that he says himself, I will give you the authority. Satan can run around as though he has power. But there is one who has authority over Satan. And the one who has authority over Satan is the one who says, I give you the same authority. So that when you sit with me, we are seated together with Christ. When you sit with me, you can now administrate the same power, dispense the same authority as though you are sitting with me. So when Satan is harassing you, it's someone else has given him that power. But when you get to understand the power within you, then you have authority over Satan. Am I communicating something? Power is defined as the ability or potential of an individual to influence others. But authority is the legal, formal right to give orders, to give commands, to take decisions. Power is a personal trait, but authority is a formal right. When we, uh, as many as are of the sonship of Christ, to them he gave that authority. So if you are born again, you have the authority. But many people don't understand the authority of a believer. 
Many of us don't understand the authority of a believer. So when your family is being terrorized by the enemy, it is because you have not understood the authority that you have. You can take authority over demonic power in your family. You can take authority over any influence of the enemy, over your business, over your own health. You can take authority. In Africa, sometimes we don't have medical care that really works. We have something that looks like it. But we take authority over sickness and disease. By the time you go to hospital, they confirm that you are healed. Because we have the authority. Can you take, tell your neighbor we have authority? The major source of power is knowledge and expertise. But with authority, it is a confirmant. It is given by a superior level. How do you get authority? This is the center of my message, and then we call it a day. First of all, is in your ranking with Christ. The rest can run around, but if you understand the ranking that you have in Christ. For example, our position in Christ is that we are seated together with him in the heavenly places. Not in the low places, in the heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 says this, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Authority is given because of your positioning in Christ. I'll repeat that. Authority here on earth is based on the positioning that you have in Christ. If you are sitting together with Christ, believe you me, you need to understand that you are an elevated human being. When you look at a problem from that low level, the problem looks like a major thing. But when you come here, you look at the problem from a position of vantage, you look at it downwards, the problem is small. So when you have authority, everything else that you have becomes small because you can handle it. Tell your neighbor you can handle it. Tell your neighbor you can handle it. In the book of Acts, chapter 28, there's a very interesting story there again. When Paul uh, was, uh, immediately they just had a shipwreck and they ended up in the seashore. Uh, in verse 3 says, but when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. But he shook off the viper. He shook off the viper. Why? He had the authority over the serpent. When you understand your authority, there is no snake. There is nothing that can harm you. Authority in Christ. Number two is your identity and standing with God. Many people don't have a proper identity in Christ. That is why we suffer sometimes identity crisis. You want to look like this, you want to look like the other, you, have to have, you want to have this image, you want to have this fake life. Sometimes you don't have authenticity in the spiritual realm. Why? Because we have never understood where we stand. There is a man called Elijah. Elijah, the Bible says, was a man just like us. And he prayed earnestly and said, there shall be no rain for three and a half days until I say so. James chapter 5 verse 17 confirms. And then he says, and Elijah prayed again and there was rain. What sort of a man was this? Who can shut the heavens for three and a half years and become a victim of that same weather forecast. What authority is he carrying? 
But then he gives us the comfort of understanding through 1 Kings 18 verse 15 that says, and Elijah, as the Lord of, and Elijah says, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand. In other words, there is a space that he has found within God where he stands. The question is, where do you stand when there is a storm? Where do you stand when there is a problem? When there is a challenge, where do you stand? All right, let's move away from problems. When you are happy, where do you stand? If you don't have a standing, a right standing with God, because what we have commonly known as righteousness is a common standing with God, where you have a space with God. Moses had to beg for this. God, if, you have found, if I have found favor with you, show me your glory. And God told him, no man can see me and live. However, I'll pull you into a certain cleft and then I'll position you somewhere and I will cause my glory to pass by. You will not see me, but you will see my backside. In other words, I'll create a space within the rock where you can see me. Positioning. Can you tell your neighbor positioning? Your identity and standing with God grants you authority. That is why sometimes when you go to a place uh, uh, in Kenya or, or largely in Africa, if you go to a higher office and you want to cash in on something or you want some favor and stuff like that, you can go to that office and you can say, Pastor Peter has sent me to you. And they will help you because of the name that you have come with. That name is authorizing. Do you understand? So you can say, so and so has sent me to you that you help me. That means the person whom you are quoting has got the authority over what you are going to look for. So in the same way, if you have a positioning in God, you have authority to authorize things to happen. Just like Elijah, you can now authorize rain. In Africa, we have rainmakers, people who can determine when it will rain and when it will not rain. These are people who have got sufficient authority. They have manipulated the spiritual principles and they can cause things to happen and you, you, you dare doubt what they are saying at your own peril. They can tell you tomorrow, this time, this will happen. They have authority. They have authority. Just the way we are telling some of you who are sick, by now, tomorrow, you will be healed because we have the authority. Those of you who are having a bad time, we can tell you tomorrow, this time, you will be okay because we carry the authority. If your child has run away from home, I can tell you tomorrow he will have called you because I have the authority. Why our positioning in God and identity is intact? Number three, how do you get authority? By faithfulness. Many people are unfaithful. Unfaithful to God, unfaithful to men, unfaithful to their wives, unfaithful to their children. They are just unfaithful to their employment. They are unfaithful. With faithfulness comes trust. And when you are faithful and you are trusted, you are conferred authority. There's a story in the book of Luke chapter 19 again, verse 16. Very interesting story of the parable of the talents. Um, I love this story because it brings out the issue. Take time and read it when you have uh, put it down. It says this, verse 16, chapter 19 of Luke. Then came first the first one saying, Master, your mina has earned 10 minas. This guy went on a journey and he called some of his servants and gave them each minas and told them, do business until I come. And then he went to look for, him, for himself a kingdom. And when he came, he came to settle their accounts. And he asked them, okay, the first one called them. The first one came and said, the mina that you gave me has earned 10 times more. Then he was told, okay, good and faithful servant, go and have authority over 10 cities. The other one came and said, it has earned five more. He was told, okay, likewise, go and have authority over five cities. 
The other one came and said, I knew you were a hard master, and I hid your mina, and here it is, I hid it in an handkerchief. And he was told, you wicked servant. But then, the, 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 the point that I want to put, put across is this. The first one came saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, well done, good servant. Because you are faithful with very little, you have authority over ten cities. So authority comes through faithfulness. When you are unfaithful, forget authority. But when you are faithful... With little, you can now be entrusted with much. Am I making some credible sense? So when you have trust issues, forget about being given authority to do anything. And God is always looking for men who are faithful. Be careful not to deal with people who are anointed rebels and faithful people. You would rather work with people who are faithful, not gifted, because gifted can be terrorizing sometimes because of charisma. But when they are trustworthy, they are faithful, thereby you can now confer them authority. Number five, number four rather, is if you want authority, distinguish yourself. Have some level of distinguishment, whereby your league, you are not playing with the common people. Put yourself aside. Separate yourself for God's use. For example, there's this guy called Daniel. Daniel survives four regimes. Several presidents come into power. The first one is Nebuchadnezzar. And he seeks the help, the wisdom, and the assistance of Daniel. Then the second one is Belshazzar. The third one is Cyrus. The last one is Darius. All of these guys sought the help of this one man called Daniel. The question is this. What is it that Daniel had? What did this man know that four people in authority could look for him for help? Daniel had something called distinguishment. When you read chapter 6, verse 1, and it pleased Darius to set uh, over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account so that the king would suffer no loss. Verse 3 is what I was looking for. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors. In other words, he was unique. He was trustworthy. And the only distinguishing factor is that there was the spirit of God in him. When you don't have the spirit of God, another spirit will rule over you. When you don't have the Holy Spirit of God, another spirit will take control over your life. And so Daniel distinguished himself that he was unique and God trusted him with wisdom. In fact, the Bible says this, light was found in him because the spirit of God was with him. Light was found in him. The spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding was found in him. When you have authority without wisdom, you are dangerous. When you are, have this position of authority without wisdom, you are a dangerous individual. But when you have got this position in Christ, this position here on earth, and then God now trusts you with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, might, counsel. You become so influential and impactful, but also you have the fear of God within you. Lastly, lastly, is if you want to have authority, you have to be very meek. Very meek. Because when you have authority without meekness, you can kill people. Moses, my namesake. <laughs> Chapter 12 of Numbers is a very interesting story. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. I don't know why they had to make distinction about this African woman. So they said... 
he has, has the Lord indeed spoken only to Mo, through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord had it. When you talk about the servants of God, be very careful because God hears it. God had it. And then he came himself and called for a meeting. Verse 3. Now the man Moses was very humble. Are you seeing that? Very meek. Than more than all who are in the face of the earth. Verse 4. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses and Aaron and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tabernacle of meeting. So that the three came out, and then the Lord came and stood at the, uh, in the pillar of cloud and stood at the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they were both forward. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream, not so with Moses, my servant. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them, and he departed. Be careful when God comes and speaks to you over what you have been saying negatively about people, and then he goes quiet. It means you are not a meek person. You are not a humble person. So for you to have authority, number one, let me go over it again, you need to be very, very intentional about your positioning in Christ. Number two, you need to be very intentional about your standing with God. Number three, you need to be very faithful. First of all, to God, to the house of God, to your own life, to principles of life, you need to be very faithful. Extremely faithful. Number four, you need to distinguish yourself like Daniel. And lastly, you need to be very meek if you are going to have authority. Because authority that is given to people who are not meek can kill many people. If you have a gun, for example, a gun given to a child is a destructive weapon. But a gun given to a soldier is a protective device. You choose how to use the weapons. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and any stronghold and anything that exalts itself against the Christ. Because we have the authority. And right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I take authority over every sickness in your life. I take authority over anything that has been terrorizing your peace, your joy. I take authority right now and I release peace upon your life. Receive the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding. And God bless you as you walk with joy and peace. Because this is the authority of a believer. God bless you. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.